We all know that mushrooms are pretty good for you, but what about their filaments like roots or mycelium? Now, one company that's pretty obsessed with these mycelium is Mycotechnology, which has figured out a way to use these mycelium to remove bitter compounds from certain foods and also to enhance their nutritional profile at the same time. So what kind of fascinates me is how you even discovered that these uh, mycelium had these properties in the first place. Well, it was really interesting. Dr. Brooks Kelly, who's one of the co-founders of our company, discovered this uh, when he was at Penn State University working on his PhD. What we're doing is leveraging what nature already does. So in the forest, mushrooms have a symbiotic relationship with trees. They remove toxins and they infuse nutrition back into the root system of trees. And in nature, things that are toxic tend to be bitter. So it's that natural uh, symbiotic relationship that we leverage in our process. So to do this on a commercial scale, to make it um, something you can do viably, do you um, take mushrooms and put them on your, your substrate or do you um, spray the mycelium? How, how does it work in practice? Well, what we do is we actually use the roots of mushrooms called mycelium and we grow it in a liquid environment, an aqueous environment, and that allows us to scale it quite well. So we spray it on a substrate and we let it ferment for a period of time and then we harvest it at the end of that. So what kind of raw materials uh, do you work on? Well, it works really well on things like coffee and chocolate, teas, grains, and uh, also on stevia. Okay, okay. So could you talk a bit about how you, or if you have to prepare these raw materials in any way before you inoculate them with these mycelium? Yeah, we do have to prepare it a little bit. There's a lot of competing organisms that can be present on these substrates. So typically green mold is one. So we uh, sterilize it or pasteurize it before we introduce the fungi. Okay, so once uh, you've done that um, and you inoculate uh, these substrates uh, with these mycelium, what happens, how long does it take, and how do you know when it's done? <laughs> oh, a very good question. So like coffee is an example, it takes about seven days. So uh, we'll spray it on there, we'll let it ferment and grow, and you can look at the color change. It'll change from a dark color to a lighter color, uh, and then when it's done, we remove the excess moisture, and then we roast it like normal coffee. Okay, and uh, the final product, um, does it still contain some mycelium and do you have to label these on the end product? It does uh, contain some mycelium. Uh, it has beta-glucans from the, the mushrooms, which are quite good for you. Uh, and the labeling by the FDA is to require to put mushroom mycelium on the ingredient label. Okay, okay. So how do you know, have you done much testing or have your partners done much testing of these finished products to see if they really do, you know, contain fewer of these bitter compounds that you're trying to remove? Uh, yes, we've done uh, before and after testing by third-party labs and uh, there's about seven different molecules that contribute to bitterness in coffee as an example and we reduce those by 55 to 75 percent. Okay. It really tastes great. Yeah. No need to put cream and sugar in your coffee. Okay, and what about the ability of some of these mycelium not just to take out the, the stuff you don't want but also infuse these uh, substrates with the things you do want? Yes, so beta-glucans are the biggest quantity you get. Uh, the mushrooms contain about 14% beta-glucans. Mm -hmm. So it's really healthy for you. They're very bioactive and they really stimulate your immune system. I mean, it all sounds almost too good to be true. You're, you've taken a natural process, you're sort of replicating that on a commercial scale. So what's the catch? Is there scalability challenges? Is it expensive? What about regulation? Well, scalability was our biggest problem to overcome. So our first year was all about uh, scalability. We were able to take it from little small jars uh, and grow it into do 20,000 pounds in our first quarter of production. So yeah, scalability was an issue. We've overcome that. Uh, regulatory, it's, it's uh, you know, you have to go through the regulatory processes, which we've been doing. Uh, so uh, no, it's, uh, it's ready for market and, and we're very excited to, uh, to partner with someone like U.S. Nuatong here with our Stevia product. Okay, so can you talk a bit about um, where you see the most commercial potential? I think the, the near term largest uh, potential for this is in Stevia. Uh, there's a huge trend right now for consumers to move away from sugar for all kinds of health reasons. And stevia is a natural sweetener, 300 times sweeter than sugar, but it has a problem. It has an aftertaste, but it has no calories. And people aren't willing to compromise taste for calories. They want it to taste just like a sugar-sweetened product. With our technology, we're able to uh, mask 
the bitter licorice metallic aftertaste of stevia, so you don't have to compromise. It tastes great and no calories. Just also, I wanted to ask you, because we've had a lot of the questions about the potential in the cereal industry, because I understand you can actually take some of the gluten uh, out of wheat, for example. Yes, we've had great success with that, and it was actually a surprise to us when uh, we went through the process the first time. We noticed it right away that the gluten was gone. And so basically what we've done is the, the mushrooms have consumed the gluten protein. Uh, and, and they also put protein back, but it's a uh, type of protein that's very digestible. So we end up with 40% more protein. So it's very interesting and surprising that we can remove all the gluten and end up with more protein than when we started. Okay, well thank you so much for joining us. It'll be well, fascinating to see how this evolves. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate you having me today. Thank you. This is Elaine Watson reporting for Food Navigator USA.